The following video is one in a series on Christian Resilience Training, the basic contents of which reflect the beliefs and practices of the video's producer, Chaplain Jeff Dillard. Chaplain Dillard holds to the Old and New Testaments as the inerrant Word of God, and therefore the sole and sufficient standard for our faith and practice in all relationships. Chaplain Dillard initiates creating and posting these videos. Their contents and YouTube's linked videos do not necessarily reflect specific beliefs, practices, requirements, or endorsements of the Department of Defense, its subordinate organizations, or other groups with which Chaplain Dillard is affiliated. Viewing any videos in this series is strictly voluntary. Welcome back. We're continuing our series of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Today we're looking at the first part of chapter 6. In chapter 6, for the most part, he's looking at some common religious practices, uh, giving to the needy, uh, praying, fasting, and he wants us to look beyond the visible practice at the purpose that the Lord uh, gives these things to us for our relationship with him and our relationship with each other. So he's looking beyond the visible, and I want to consider today some very practical applications of what we see here some some dangers of misinterpreting this uh, for a self-righteousness but also some positive practical examples so let's look at the scripture together and we'll consider some things Matthew 6 verses 1 through 4 beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them for then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven thus when you give to the needy sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who is in secret will reward you. The first thing we need to consider here is that hypocrisy is a potential reality in any religious practice. And again, I want to differentiate between religion and Christianity. Religion is what man does to try to reach up to God. Christ is the Son of God who has effectively come down to reach us. Very different things. For us to reach up to God uh, is impossible. For, for Him to reach down to us has already been done, and He's proven it. Uh, that's a topic of many other videos, not the just the one of today. But let's uh, let's consider that uh, danger of hypocrisy. Uh, it can be very easy to do things to be seen by other people, because it looks like we're a good person. But it's what is in the heart that God sees. Are we doing it to serve somebody else? Are we doing it to honor Him? Are we doing it because we love Him? because he has done similar things to us. So that we need to always have in mind that our outward behavior is less important than the inward reality. In our inward reality, if it's to be godly, must come from God himself. So we need the Lord Jesus to work in us to forgive us of our past and our ongoing present and in our future too and to change us so that we are, are not the person who just lives to be seen or to be satisfied ourselves, but that we live to enjoy relationship with Him, we live to enjoy Him more, uh, to know Him more, and we live to serve others and to point them back to the one who is giving us real joy. So to be aware of hypocrisy is the first point. Secondly, Jesus said we will always have the poor with us. There's three passages there in uh, Matthew, Mark, and John, uh, and there may be others where the Lord said, you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me, the Lord said. So there is ample opportunity for us to care for other people who are hurting because of their poverty, their physical poverty, uh, not just spiritual poverty. That's another topic, which is also real. Uh, think about our economy. Think about any nation in the world where you have ever been. Uh, I have I have lived in six or seven countries uh, for months and years at a time. I have visited another dozen. So, and I have never been in a country where there was not poverty. 
there's always an opportunity to care for somebody. And of course, we can be discerning. Uh, you can, if somebody says that they'll uh, work for a living, they've got the sign out there and they want food, uh, are they doing that because they know it's easier for you to, to give them some money than to uh, give them some food or to give them a job? Um, I, I can't tell you the answer to that in the moment. Um, that's up to you to be discerning in that. But the Lord says that the poverty, the truly poor, are there and need our help. And we should help them. So look for the poor. Who are the people around you that are hurting? Uh, it could be somebody that you uh, know down the street or in your neighborhood, and they have a low-income family, and they're struggling, and they have a, a teenage child who can cut your grass, and you can pay them for it. Or they've got um, a teenage girl who is trustworthy, a person of good character, and they can babysit your kids. Now, I know some red flags go up. I said trustworthy character, and you know them well. So there are different ways that we can help the poor, and, and there's also a place to give a guy uh, money on the street and, and to buy a guy a hamburger, um, now look and see if there's a, an alcohol place on the same corner where they're begging or see if they have alcohol in their breath. But there are also many, many ways that you can find the poor and to be helpful to them. Thirdly, Christ cared for the needy himself because he is love. You can look at the first John passage there where it describes the Lord Jesus as love. We might say, well, I do many other types of good works. I serve in my church, I'm good to my family, I'm a hard worker in my job. But the Lord cared uh, for the poor. That's very easy to see because that's part of who he is. He is sacrificial. The cross shows that he gave himself for undeserving people. So there is a very much a place for people who follow him to give to others because that's who the Lord is. And if you want to look at how to give to the poor, if you want to look at how to care for the needy, look at how the Lord Jesus did it. He met their practical needs. Uh, when people were following him and they had grown weary and there was no place to get something to eat, he fed them. When he came upon somebody who was sick, uh, he met their need. Now, we might not be able to heal them, but we might be able to help somebody with a medical need that they have uh, to pay somebody's bill because we know it's a true uh, medical need to give somebody a ride uh, to work uh, because they don't have a car. There are more ways to meet the needs of the poor than just give them money or food. Um, there are many, many ways that we can help them, but we must help them because that's part of who God himself is. And when we follow him, one of the best ways to know him and to enjoy him is to live in his image, such as meeting the needs of the poor. We are to care for them as people in his image. Uh, in James, uh, the brother of the Lord, James is one of the brothers of the Lord, talks about the fact that we can't just talk a good talk. We've got to walk the walk. We can't um, have a lot of riches to ourselves and say to somebody else, uh, go be warm and well fed, to say good words, uh, I love you, God loves you, hope you find some clothes and something to eat. Uh, no, we need to put action to our words to be a person of integrity. And again, I've mentioned this in previous videos. If you look at the word integrity, the root there means oneness, that we are a whole person. Uh, an integer is a whole number. Uh, to be a person of integrity means to be a whole person, not just talk uh, the good talk, but to walk the good walk, because that is part of who God is. And lastly, he rewards those who give sincerely to help them and to honor Christ. The Lord is going to bless us if we want to do this out of a heart of genuine concern for others and to honor him, he will reward us. And that reward might come in the moment of the joy of giving. It might come in eternity with him. But either way, he will reward us because it pleases him when we live in his image. And he is a giver too. Hope that's encouraging to you. And hope you'll tune in next week when we look at the next part of Matthew chapter 6 and other uh, common religious practices that need to go more than, more, go beyond more than behavior, but go to the issues of the heart to point back to the Lord Jesus himself. And I hope you'll join us then. At the release date of this video, I am stationed with Research, Development, and Engineering Command 
RDECOM at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. Because the majority of our personnel are in this area, I spend most of my time here. I do, however, travel to our distant units based on command priorities and budget. I place these videos on YouTube for broad visibility to Army personnel and their families, but I hope the videos will be helpful to others too. If you are assigned to RDECOM and want to request specific topics by video, training on site or by VTC, or confidential counseling on site or by secure webcam, you can contact me at jeffrey.d.dillard.mil at mail.mil.